Hello and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, April the 21st and it's never a dull moment at the Egg Lady household. So we'll talk about that more here in just a few minutes. But welcome, welcome everybody. If you are brand new, um, we hope that you would say hi and hello and let us know that you're new because we would love to welcome you. If you were watching this later on YouTube, that's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg. Please subscribe and comment. I love to hear those comments over on YouTube. But hello, hello everybody. I am hope you are having a wonderful day. We had a little bit of a heat wave here in East Tennessee and now today it is chilly again. So our weather is, I don't know, it's schizophrenic, psychotic, something. And hello, Lynn, it is good to see you. Hello, Sarah, greetings from Raleigh, Massachusetts. Yep, right back at you. Um, I hope everybody's having a great week. And again, you can watch this later on YouTube. It's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg. And you can watch it later here on Facebook, or you can go to if you have an egg.com, watch all of them. And hello, Mary from Pittsburgh. Hello, Anna. There are 360 plus 360 plus, so like more than 360 other videos that you really need to go back and watch, okay? You really need to. Let's see, hello, Catherine from Crazy Cold, Lowell, North Carolina. Oh, so what is Crazy Cold in North Carolina? And let's see, hello, Elaine. Hello, Katie. Uh-oh, John is joining us, so everybody's going to be on their best behavior because John is here. Mm, okay, John is in the house. And hello, Carol Lou. Hello, Sandra from Demons Ferry. Let's be honest, John's just happy that he has running water again, so... He's relaxing. We'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. We'll talk about talk more about that here in just a few minutes. But hello and happy Sunday, everybody. Yes, hello, Marianne. Um, today is April the 21st. I am Kelly. This is if you have an egg.com. It is never, ever, ever a dull moment. Ever a dull moment here. Um, yeah, so a little bit of news. The first little bit of news is that today is the first day of the Drink More Water Challenge over in the If You Have an Egg group. So, if you are not already a member of the If You Have an Egg group over on Facebook, it is a closed group, and that's just so that we can chat amongst ourselves and not worry about prying eyes seeing. You do have to answer the three questions if you want in, though. So, Julie hosts, I always cannot figure out how to say this. She hosts, hostesses, whatever. She hosts a challenge every single week. Drink more water is backed by popular demand. So, that is, that is one challenge that she's been asked to put back on replay again. So today started, hello Hattie, today started the Drink More Water Challenge. Again, that's over on the If You Have an Egg Facebook group. It is such a simple challenge. You, you're not competing with anybody. And thank you very much, Carol Lou, for sharing the link over to the group. Remember to answer the three questions. You're not competing with anybody. There's no big prize at the end other than you know that you had as much water as you could get in every day. You know, it's just something fun to do, and it's fun for people to comment, so it's always great for people to participate, but it is not an actual, it's a challenge, but yeah, but it's no, there's no competition. Okay, and hello, Sherry. It's just something to keep you motivated, and hello, Kim. Good to see you. So we're going to talk about ugh, the ridiculous news for the week here in a second after a few more people get on, but, and hello, Julie. We were Okay, so Julie is here. Julie, we were just talking about the Drink More Water Challenge. Here's Julie. Julie, everyone, everyone, Julie. So she is the lovely lady who hosts those challenges for us and Drink More Water has made it back around by popular demand. So please hop on over there and go ahead and join that challenge. And again, there's nothing to click. There's nothing to say. There's no money to pay. There's nothing to click. There's nothing official to do other than say, I'm in, I'll do it. And you can comment if you drink your water, you can comment and say what your goal is. There's lots of different things you can do. Yep, and it's just a great encouragement to all of us. So that's the first bit of news today which is Sunday, April the 21st. The second bit of news is there are only nine days left to either get yourself a smartphone or a tablet or something if you have been using the Weight Watcher, if you have been using, hello Sylvia, if you have been using Weight Watchers on the desktop. So if you are a desktop only or like a laptop, if it's not a mobile device, if you are a desktop or laptop only with weight, for Weight Watchers, sorry. You've got nine days left to figure out what you're going to do because most of the tracking features and connect for sure, those are going to be gone. So those will no longer be available on the desktop or the laptop version. And that is as of April the 30th. That is the official end date. So I'm not really sure what you're going to be able to do on WeightWatchers.com on the actual computer. I don't, I don't even know what it'll be for. Maybe for joining, unjoining, I don't know. I don't even know what it'll be for, but I guess we'll find out. Um, on April the 30th, and I will check it out for you all and let you know. But again, most of the features that we have been enjoying, or if you've been on the desktop version that you've been enjoying, like being able to track, like being able to look some things up, 
um, being able to check out what the weekly technique is and connect. That will all be ending here in nine days. So you've got, you have nine days to figure out what you're going to do if you don't have a smartphone or a tablet. Yeah, so you better get on it. And then the last thing, the last little bit of news before we actually get started, never a dull moment at the Egg Lady household. So as if the prior week with everything with Dusty didn't already have my amount, uh, my emotions going, woo! I mean, it was like everybody I saw two weeks ago, I was like, don't you dare ask about the dog. Don't you dare ask about the dog. Oh, they just asked about the dog. You know, it was just like an up and down and up and down and up and down two weeks ago. So not to be outdone, the cast iron pipes at our daughter's house, which we own, decided that they would no longer be servicing us. So they were like 60, 65 years old. So we got it. We were expecting get a, to get a nice little hole dug in the ground. Instead, we have about a, but we have about 100 feet of dug up and it's still dug up. So there's about a 100 foot trench. I don't know, I might be exaggerating. John will have to tell you for sure, but it feels like it's more than 100 feet um, dug up more than one time, so they had to dig it up multiple times to keep working on it. Two 60-year-old, two 60-plus-year-old trees had to come down. One of them was providing fantastic shade. One of them really had kind of needed to come down anyway, so we took it down at the same time. Those both had to come down. More digging, digging, more digging, and more digging. And for days, we didn't have sewer. For days, we had water's on, water's off, water's on, water's off. And as a special treat, Whoever put the whoever put the um, plumbing in or the what would you even call that utilities? Whoever did the utilities 65 years ago did not mark them properly, and the water line was running across the sewer line. So as soon as they dug up for the sewer line, it broke the water line. <sighs> yeah. So now we have a huge cavern in the yard while they make sure that everything is good this time. Um, the girls have so enjoyed being bathed on their back porch to the point that their neighbors child the neighbors children have also asked to take baths or showers whatever in their backyard so their mother has had to start doing that also um, and Alyssa did point out that Papa will have less grass to mow because it's just a big mud pit right now on the side and there will be less leaves to rake this fall so all good news but you know what we have water now i have bathed i have showered we can freely wash clothes it is such an amazing thing so the next time that i think oh i've got to wash clothes or oh i've got to wash dishes i will be happy to do so because we have running water again okay that is it that is it with um for the little bit of news oh yeah and uh, john almost said papa john says party all the time party all the time yeah yeah because yeah we can go potty as much as we want to now as much as we want to. And Sarah, you were exactly right. Thank goodness it did not happen during the freezing winter. Yeah, we would have just had to go stay at a hotel or move in with somebody. And aloha, Kathy. It is good to see you. Okay, so that's it for our exciting news for this week. I need to know who went to an in-person workshop last week. So give me a thumbs up if you did that. If you went to an in-person workshop and sat your little bottom in a chair, thumbs ups for that. Or if you went to um, a virtual workshop, if you went to an intended a Zoom workshop, let's see some thumbs ups for that. Come on, come on, everybody, because I need some good news after the week we had last week. Yep, thumbs ups. Good job, everybody. And let's see some hearts. If you were here with us live last week, and yes, Ann, I saw you. Um, some hearts, if you were here with us live last week, or if you, um, if you watched later on demand, and yes, Melissa, I saw you as well. Yep, good for you, good for you. Oh, and Sarah was just here with us and her fellow Eggluts. Good job, Kim. Good job, Sandra. So, bravo. Good job, Kathy. Bravo stickers to everyone who did their in-person workshops last week, um, virtual workshops, or attended with us, even with all the drama. And thank you all for living through all the drama with us. But good job, everybody. Oh, I did want to mention, it's pretty funny, Karen Brown here in our group, I think was actually more upset about the water being off than we, than we were. We're used to camping. We're used to kind of roughing it. We're used to things like that. So it was just, it was an inconvenience, an irritating inconvenience, the length of time that it went on. And trust me, the contractors that were working on it were also, yeah, irritated. That last day, um, a, one of our contractors who was a friend of mine looked like he'd been mud wrestling. He looked like they had just been rolling him around in the wet mud. But it was just hilarious because I think Karen Brown, um, who didn't even have to live through it, took it harder than we did. So bravo to everybody again who went to their in-person workshops, did virtual workshops, or was here with us last week. Okay, last week was chat number 360, and we were talking about eating out hacks to keep you on track. 
shocking. That was shocking information. And no, Carol Lou, I did not get an aura ring. That was shocking information to some of you all last week when we played our little game at the end. So we talked about having, um, you know, that what's, what's for dinner or what are we going to eat? Those are some of the worst words that you can use in the English language because it kind of sends people into a panic. You know, I don't know. What do you, what do you want? What do you, what can you have? So we were talking about pro tips for having a hack attack, like how to hack your eating out instead of just panicking and having a Mac attack. Okay. One of the things I wanted you to do was to well, well, watch out for some things. And um, those little salad cups that they serve at restaurants, those are actually four tablespoons. They look small, but those are actually four tablespoons and four tablespoons of regular ranch is nine. It can be as much as nine points. Um, holding the bread basket and the butter mop. We talked about things like that. Talked about avoiding things that are like slaw, pasta salad, regular dressings, teas that have those fancy syrups added to them. Anything that the server or the manager or especially if the chef can't, if they can't identify it, probably need to stay away from that. We also talked about letting our fingers do the walking using our hands to kind of guesstimate things because you're not going to break out, you're probably not going to break out your measuring cups and spoons and things like that if you've gone out to eat with somebody, if you're at their house eating, probably not going to do that, but you can do things like, um, it, and that, this is um, on your, um, it's in your original Weight Watchers booklet if you go to an in-person workshop and you can also find this um, on the Weight Watchers app. Using your hands for things like this is a cup um, you can do your thumb from the, um, from the tip to the base is about one ounce of meat or cheese, you know, just some different things like that for, um, you know, just kind of figuring things out while you're out and about and out and about doesn't necessarily mean that you're at, you know, at a restaurant. It could be at somebody's house. Eating out is eating somewhere not in your normal space. And then the last thing we talked about was no before you go. So you all were shocked over this. We played a little game last week. And I had you pick some things off of a menu from Outback Steakhouse. So that was one restaurant that I was pretty sure that several of you all would have, no matter what part of the you know, country you're in, or that you would have something similar. So we played a little game, and I had you all choose from some menu items and then you know, decide what you were going to have, you know, what you were going to have on that, you know, as part of that menu. So um, knowing before you go, can save your butt. It has saved my butt so many times just to go ahead and look something up before you get there. And if you don't know what it is, to try and guesstimate it, try to find it somewhere else. So we um, so we played that little game and everyone, everyone was shocked over how many points they um, had gotten from the things that they had chosen. And a lot of you all made some different choices. So your homework for last week was choose facts, not fries. So when you're looking, when you're trying to decide what you're going to get, what you're going to have, and you're going to know before you go, you're going to choose some facts about these things instead of just going ahead and going, forget it. I'm just choosing fries. Okay. So that was your homework for last week. And let's see how you did. Hello, Marlene from Florida. And you were just in time. And hello, Barbara from the Crossroads. So in your choosing facts instead of fries, Deanna's normal order from Raising Cane's is a box combo and a lemonade. So she normally gets the combo, she gets it as a box combo, and then she gets a lemonade. But when she checked the facts, it came up to 49 points. And apparently she doesn't normally look these kinds of things up before she goes, but it comes up to 49 points. So she discovered that if she orders it separately, instead of ordering it as a combo, skips the bread. So Raising Cane's is kind of, I guess it's kind of like Zaxby's and that you automatically get bread with it and the bread can count for a huge amount of points. So she ordered it instead of a combo, she ordered the items separately, she skipped the bread and kept the lemonade, hello Jonna, and it was only 23 points. So instead of 49 points, she got it down to 23 points just by doing that. What an eye opener. Huge eye opener for Deanna. And I'm so glad that she figured that out. Kelsey's normal, normal Chick-fil-A chicken biscuit is a whopping 16 points. Okay, I eat those, and I know that they're 16 points. If you get them like they come, they are 16 points, and you just have to count them. Okay, the fact is, though, that now she knows that she can swap out that fried chicken. You can She can swap out that fried chicken patty. Remember, we looked it up on our app last week. So she can swap out the fried chicken patty for a grilled filet. She can hold the butter on the biscuit, and if you go on the, on the um, Chick-fil-A app and order, you can make all of these without actually having to tell anyone. Like, you can just make them on the app. Swatch, swipping, swapping out the fried chicken patty for the grilled chicken pat for the grilled chicken, holding the butter and hello baby, holding the butter 
and she added an egg to it, so it made it look huge. I mean, it made it like this thick with the biscuit, the no butter biscuit, hold the butter biscuit, the grilled chicken filet, and the egg. And the egg was so fluffy, it made it 10 points. So her biscuit was like this thick at that point, and it made it 10 points instead of 16 points. Check. Hello, Orlando Debbie. It's good to see you. So check, check. That was a good fact check right there. And our pop quiz last week resulted in an almost 100 folks swapping a similar or a smaller steak and grilled chicken or grilled shrimp for the chicken dish. Okay, almost 100 of you all, by the time everything was said and done, during the live chat, after the live chat, comments that I got later, almost 100 of you all were like, what, huh? I would have picked chicken. Um... You know, and I didn't let you look at the menu, so you didn't see that the chicken was smothered and that it had cheese and things on it. But almost a hundred of you decided to swap out that chicken for the smaller steak and the grilled shrimp and save some amazing points. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting chicken. I get chicken lots of places, but if you know before you go and you and you check those facts, sometimes you get to make a decision that you wouldn't have made before. Okay, so. Here are your Bravo stickers for getting your homework done. Good job, everybody. You all were great this week. Um, we had, had lots of interesting comments, especially about that pop quiz that we had last week. This week, though, we are talking about how to hack your points budget. So no matter how busy or crazy, or crazy life gets, I try to kind of hack out, to hack or carve out time for my Tuesday Night Weight Watchers meeting. I try really hard not to let anything else get in the way of the Tuesday Night Weight Watchers meeting. I try really hard not to let anything get in the way of Mondays with Alyssa. I've been spending Mondays with her since she was six months old, and she is now six and a half years old. So I work really hard on that. And I'm also working really hard now that we are living um, right behind Casey and the girls. I work really hard on making sure that I've got time for some Danny Goat dance-offs with Bo. Bo doesn't quite want as much of my attention as Alyssa does. Hello, Irma but I'm working on it. So just like you, I'm allotted 24, 24 hours a day. That's all, that's it. That's all I'm allotted is just 24. That's 160 hours a week. We have two small businesses, a family, a multitude of responsibilities. So with all of that, I know Barbara, so with all of that, I had to develop some hacks or some tricks for carving out carving out, you know, those uh, those little opportunities for time, um, you know, some hacks to make sure that I fit in the handful of things, um, that handful of things that is most important to me and protect it. I protect those like my life depended on it because sometimes it does. So last week when we were having all the water issues, I needed to go to Weight Watchers even though I had not washed my hair for two days. Dry shampoo is a wonderful thing, by the way. Even though I had not washed my hair for two days, I needed to go see some other Weight Watchers. Um, even though um, we did not have um, clean jeans or, you know, mini clean shirts, I needed to go to Alyssa's T-ball game. So we had to, ca I carved out, no matter what, you have to carve out or hack out, you know, some, some time. That's the same for your weekly points budget. So it should be treated, your weekly points budget, the weekly points budget, your daily um, allotment, the rollovers, all of those things, they should be treated with that same sense of importance because this journey is important to you, so let's hack it, okay? We're gonna hack into this. First thing, first thing to, into hacking into your points, the, one of the um, most important um, point hacking tricks is knowing before you're going. So last week I said no before you go, so I decided to spice it up a little this week and say knowing before you're going, okay? We talked about this last week, but honestly, knowing what the points value is for everything that you plan to enjoy before you eat it, best hack you can learn. That's one of the best hacks that you can learn. Okay, checking out a restaurant beforehand, maybe knowing the points values of things that you already have on hand or have gathered around you, all, those are all important, important pieces to this hackable puzzle, okay? So we'll chat about a little bit more about that in the second half. I've got some things over here to show you in the second half. Second thing is a pre-track hack. So tracking ahead of time, so tracking ahead of, let's say that you're going to a birthday party and you want some cake. This is one of Gwen's most famous examples. So if you go to a birth, if you're going to be going to a birthday party and you know, oh man, this chick makes some great cake. It's that real lard icing. And for those of you who don't know what lard icing is, 
I'm sorry. I have to explain it almost every time I mention it. Just trust me. It's the best. Um, but so let's say that you're going to a birthday party. This chick makes the most fantastic cake, real lard icing. And you're thinking, I'm having me a cupcake. I'm having me a cupcake. Going ahead and pre-tracking that is makes all the difference in the world. So if you go in saying, I'm having a cupcake, I'm going to pre-track a cupcake, I know it's a lot of points, but I'm going to go ahead and write it down. Then when you go to the party and you have the cupcake, you think, you know what? I pre-tracked it. I knew I was going to have it. That was a delicious cupcake. You know, I'll have another one next year. If you don't track it and you go in and you think, I'm not having a cupcake, not having a cupcake, will not be having this cupcake. And then you have a cupcake. You still had a cupcake, but how do you feel? You feel, oh man, what did I do? What happened? So a pre-track hack. There's tracking ahead of time serves several purposes, a couple of purposes. One is you already know how many points you have available so that you can plan around it. So you can plan around if it's a special food or a special meal, whatever it is, you can, you already know if you pre-track it, you already know how many other points you have. So you can kind of, you know, work around it. Another thing is it's easier to stick with your original decision if it's already on paper, on paper or in your app. So if you're tracking in your app, instead of writing it down with a piece, you know, with a um, pen, pen, or pen or a pencil and a piece of paper, if it's already on there, if you've already pre-tracked it, it's a lot easier to stick with your original decision. And then also, even if you do stray off of the plan a little bit, you can hold your head high. You can hold it high because you made a decision. You made the decision rather than letting that decision happen to you or for you, okay? So go you. Good job on tracking. And then the last thing is never say never. So the nice thing about the Weight Watchers program now is that no is never the answer, okay? Back in the day, so way, way back in the day. Now my mom started doing Weight Watchers, gosh, how many years ago would that be? 50 maybe? And I started doing Weight Watchers more than 25 years ago, but way back in the day, we had a long list of no-no foods. Or if it wasn't a no-no food, it was a forbidden food. And if it wasn't a no-no or a forbidden food, you were either limited on how many times a week or a day that you could have it, or you had to eat certain a certain amount of things. Like we were encouraged at sometimes to eat liver. Not gonna happen, never ever. Um, there was a period of time where we were limited on how many eggs we could have. And there were some foods that were never, if you go back and find, actually we have a chat. Actually, we've got like three chats, three or four chats. If you go back and look on if you on um, youtube.com search, if you have an egg, we have, I had a little series of chats that was like Weight Watchers through the ages or whatever. And I think I went through the 70s, 80s, 90s, to early 2000s, whatever. And I went back through some of those plans and went over what we used to have to do. And it was just a little fun trip back through Weight Watchers time. Um, but we don't ever have to say never anymore. No more never. Never say never. So now we get to choose whether we would rather have something or do something or enjoy something or avoid something. It's your choice. You know, there are no forbidden foods. There are no no-no foods. There are no foods that are off of this list, okay? You can simply choose something else. You can simply choose to do something else or you can simply choose to do it, okay? Or simply a different way you can just pick a different way to get the result that you want. So hacks that lead to a yes every time, every time. One is to use your zero point foods to your advantage. So if you need to be able to say yes about some other food, some other food, an event, something that you need to pre-track, something that's coming on down the road, use your zero point foods to your advantage, okay? That will lead to a yes every single time. Second thing is to hashtag bulk it up. Because if you are saving up points for like this, let's say this birthday cupcake with the lard icing, if you're saving up um, points for that, or if you want to not use so many so that you can use, you know, some points for that, hashtag bulk it up in your other meals. So throw in some of those zero point foods, make it more, you know, maybe eat, you know, an apple and some carrots and some grapes or something to kind of bulk up a meal um, so that you don't feel so deprived waiting for whatever that other thing is. And then also using those roll those weeklies and those rollovers. We have a guy in our Tuesday night meeting that worries me to death because he's using so little of his points, and right now he's having a great weight loss. But I worry about the day when he thinks oh, I'm starving to death. 
I'm absolutely starving to death. I'm going to go get X, Y, Z, whatever brought him to Weight Watchers to begin with. Um, because he's saying, oh, I can't, he's still doing that. I can't have that. They're still fairly new. I can't have that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go over my points. I'm not going to use my weeklies. I'm not, not, not. I'm never, ever, ever. So use, if you need them, use those weeklies and those rollovers. That's what they are for. Okay, Sarah, you don't want to know what lard is. It is, well, I'll tell you, it's pure animal fat, pure animal fat. And if you did not grow up in the South, like our I'm sidetracking now because Sarah asked what lard was and someone asks every time. Our grandparents used to fry foods and they used to make all these fatty, greasy foods and they would keep um, a metal coffee can sitting on their stove and every time you, if you fried hamburgers, you poured the fat, bacon grease, all that kind of good fat, Not it's not good fat, it's not good for you fat. They poured it in these coffee cans, put the lid on and then guess what? Next week when you needed something, scoop plopped it in there that's lard so bacon fat and hamburger grease is not what they make this icing out of but just know that it is yeah it's it's rendered it's rendered from the same thing okay and it's absolutely delicious and is not good for you in any way shape or form so anyway use those weeklies and rollovers that's what they're there for if you need them use them that is a perfect way to never say never which leads me to your homework so your homework for this week is hashtag Never say never. N-E-V-E-R-S-A-Y-N-E-V-E-R. -E -E Hashtag never say never. This week's homework is a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. So, yeah, Crisco, exactly, Mary. So all you have to do is think of something. Um, you just think of something that you want to include coming up. So it might be that every Friday night that your family has pizza. That might be the thing that you want to include. Or it might be that you've got a once in a, you know once a year thing coming up, like a family reunion, and somebody makes a special, I don't know, coconut cake or you know something like that. And thank you, Lynn, for posting the homework. But whatever it is, figure out what it is. And again, it could be every week, or it could be your company brings in lunch every Wednesday, or something like that. Um, but figure out what your what your thing is going to be, and then tell us what which hack you're going to use so that you never have to say never again. Okay, so. On the on the Wednesday on the company um, or the your company providing lunch every Wednesdays maybe to never say never maybe you just save up weeklies for that because you know it's coming every Wednesday and they get the same thing every time or maybe you eat zero point foods the rest of the day but you pre track or maybe you pre track it maybe that's the hack that you use so hashtag never say never do your homework do your homework do your homework okay hopefully I will be much more attentive this week since I'm not planning on having any more natural disasters wasn't planning on the ones that we had. But anyway, so never say never. That is your homework for this week. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay. Whew. We are at the halfway point. And I don't know if you can tell, but I am thir 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 thirsty. So as part of Julie's water challenge, we do this every week, but at the 30 minute mark, everybody stop. Yes, Sandra, it is time for some water. At the 30 minute mark, everybody start the halfway point. Everybody stop and get yourself a good, good, good drink of water. And since Julie is hosting the water challenge um, again let's all get a great drink of water doesn't it feel so nice just to stop everybody just stop for a minute and take a nice drink of water okay we're at the halfway point um, in this chat this is chat number 361 and we are talking about ways to hack your points and we are never saying never again. So as part of this, I went to Kroger today. And if you all don't have Kroger, don't worry about it. You have a grocery store. And your grocery store may not carry everything that I got, but it may have something similar. Um, this is just to show you some more ideas for how to hack points. Um, one of the things we talked about in the first half was knowing before you're going. So going, you might be going to a restaurant you might be going to a friend's house you might be going to your refrigerator but you've got to be knowing before you're going okay so one of the things that you need to be knowing before you're going is what's in your refrigerator what's in your pantry and how many points it is and which things are better choices and which things you should keep on hand and which things you need to not keep on hand so in preparation for this I did go to Kroger today I got semi sort of normal ish groceries for us i do not in any way shape or form eat the same things every week i don't make the same things every week it is a 
total roulette wheel on, you know, what we're going to have, what I'm going to have. But I, what I do know or what I did know going into this week's grocery shopping was that next week we're going to be trying the um, TikTok. Okay, help me out, Debbie. Orlando Debbie is here and she's the one that she she's the one that mentioned it last week. And I've thought about it all week long. Couldn't do it because we didn't have any water until Friday night. Today's Sunday. Yeah, we didn't have any. We did not have reliable water and sewer until Friday night. So I couldn't do it this week, but I got what I needed to do to make it. And Debbie, so what is it? It's the TikTok. What's it called? Custard. Is it custard? Custard bread? No. What's it called? Anyway, I got the stuff to make it. So we're going to be trying that next time. Yes, the yogurt custard toast. So last week, Orlando Debbie brought that up. I looked it up because, you know, what else are you going to do if you can't take a shower, go to the bathroom, cook, anything else? What are you going to do for a whole week? So I looked up all these variations of yogurt custard toast because Debbie brought it up last week and I got what I need to make it for next week. So um, knowing that, I had some decisions to make and let's go over. So let's just go over what I got. Okay, we have Kroger here in Knoxville. So we have Kroger, Publix, Ingalls, Food City, Walmart, um, who am I forgetting? Kroger, and Kroger is like Meyer. So we have Kroger, Ingalls, Food City, Publix, and Walmart. And I think I'm hitting most of the major grocery stores. This, everything I'm gonna show you tonight came from Kroger. So again, if you're, if you don't have a Kroger or if your grocery store doesn't have the exact same thing, just bear with me, okay? And Debbie says they have Ingalls. Okay, first thing I got in preparation for this yogurt custard toast for next week is I went ahead and got, and this is not food, oh, Target. Yeah, I forgot, Target does have groceries. Aldi, we do have Aldi and we have Trader Joe's. Yeah, I don't know how I forgot about those. Okay, so I went ahead and got, this has nothing to do with food, but it has everything to do with food. I went ahead and got some pre-cut parchment paper. So this is already cut into sheets. You can use it up to three times and it's non-stick and it's oven safe. I got this because when we make that yogurt custard toast, that's hard to say really fast. The yogurt custard toast, when we make it next week, next Sunday, not tonight. When we make it next Sunday, I am planning on making some extras, letting them cool off, and then using this to keep them separated in my freezer bags, okay? So pre-cut parchment sheets, and Debbie says she uses them all the time. These are zero points. Zero points because you're not eating them. Okay, that was the first thing I got. Then for this yogurt yogurt custard toast, it was suggested that you use either brioche or sourdough. Well, I didn't really like the brioche choices that we had at Kroger today, so I got sourdough. And the sour, this sourdough that I got is two points for one slice. But this yogurt custard toast that we're gonna be making next week, guess what, the rest of the ingredients are zero points. They're zero points. So this in, in itself is a hack. I can use two point sourdough, real sourdough. I didn't have to use, I'm not, I didn't buy um, like carb friendly. I didn't buy light. I didn't buy whatever I just got. Um, or Debbie says you can even use artisan bread that is thicker. I looked at that also, but I really like these little Lewis half loaves. And I don't know if y'all have these or not, but I like these because this is about all the sliced bread that we can consume before it goes janky, okay? Excuse me, so I went ahead and got the sourdough half loaf, two points for one slice, but that in itself, again, is a points hack because I don't care that the bread is two points for one slice because the rest of the ingredients are zero points. <clears throat> okay, the next ingredient for that, or one of the other ingredients that I'm gonna be using for that is swerve confectioner sugar. So all of the, all of the yogurt, custard toast blah, recipes that I saw had this little sprinkling of confectioner sugar on top and I thought oh I want mine to look fancy like that because they were all like bananas or some kind of fruit and I'll show you that in a second too but um they all looked so pretty and they were such pretty presentations and I was like oh, well I want mine to have confectioner sugar on it too well guess what swerve swerve confectioner sugar is zero points so I can use a little or a lot 
of this, and I got this today at Kroger also. It is a sugar replacement, and I know, and hello Trish, happy Sunday. I know y'all are getting ready to ask me, so let me read, let me read this to you. Um, it's a delicious swerve. The ultimate sugar replacement is a delicious natural sweetener me that measures and bakes like confectioner's sugar with zero calories and zero grams of sugar per serving for the ultimate sugar replacement. It is made with no artificial no artificial flavors or preservatives. It's the perfect replacement for confectioner's sugar in your favorite baked goods, frosting, sprinkling on fruit or pancakes, and more. Okay. Zero calories, one-to-one -one measures like confectioner's sugar, great for baking, no artificial flavors or preservatives, and gluten-free. The first question I'm going to get is, what is the artificial sweetener? Because that's what everybody's going to ask. It is erythritol. So, erythritol is one of the ones that I have to, like, use in... Um, not limited, but like I can't just like, you know, drink this whole thing or not drink. I can't just eat this whole thing. Um, so, but sprinkling that on, that's going to be perfect, perfect, perfect for that yogurt custard toast. Yogurt custard toast. Okay. So, this is a, this is the haul that I got at Kroger in preparation for that. And also to show you all how easy that it is to, um, you know, to hack your, just to hack your points. So, Bananas, I got some bananas today. Yeah, they're just bananas. So yeah, easy to hack. Zero points. These used to be these used to be two points for a banana, one point for a half of banana. Anybody who's squawking about only only getting 23 points a day, we used to get, I think, I think when bananas were points, I got 30 points a day. But bananas were points, eggs were points. Things like that were points, so really, we, we really only got, depending on what you chose, we really only got about the same number of points a day, and this is much more encouraging. Hack your points, bulk it up. Remember I was talking about hashtag bulk it up? Bulk it up, bulk it up, bulk it up. So I'll be using bananas, blueberries, let me think. Bananas on one kind of a yogurt toast next week, and on the other one, blueberries, Let's see, what did I get? Blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries on the second one. So that'll be a nice hashtag bulk it up. Remember, it's only going to be two points. Oh, yeah, Salmon did have points. Debbie's right. So two points for the bread next week, zero points for everything else because it has non-fat plain Greek yogurt, an egg, and these zero-point veggies. Okay, I'm going to stop talking about the yogurt custard bread because I'm going to get too excited and talk about it too much, and then we won't have any of it to talk about next week. Um, adding flavoring to your drinks, um, I have switched to Mio, to the Mio flavorings. Casey introduced me to these. It mixes so well with water, zero points, zero points. So now when I think, you know, wow, gosh, everybody else is having a fruity drink or a, you know, something that's got a lot of flavoring in it or some, something kind of syrupy or whatever, like this one I got for Alyssa for T-Ball and it's Mio Sport. It has electrolytes and B vitamins and it's Berry Blast. So she will not be getting a syrupy, calorie laden, calorie and sugar laden sports drink for T-Ball tomorrow night. She will be getting water with a squirt of Mio Sport. Um, and then this one is Mio Strawberry Kiwi. This one will be staying at work with me. Yep, and Carol is exactly right. She said skinny syrups are good in water too. So no sugary syrups, no sugary syrups for my granddaughter either. Um, hack, 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 hack. That is definitely a great hack. Okay, one of the things that you, when you're hacking your points, especially when you're hacking your points at home, like in your own space, so we do spend a lot of time at work, or I spend a lot of time here at work, not just because I was waiting on the toilets to work in. That was part of it last week, but, um, but I do spend a lot of time here at work. So this is my, I spend more time, more awake time and eating time here than I spend anywhere else. So one of the hacks is to be really careful about the choices that I bring into the showroom and keep on hand. Okay, so this is something that I love very much. This is Annie Chun's uh, vegan tonkatsu, and I probably didn't, didn't pronounce that correctly, ramen. It's a Japanese style vegan tonkatsu ramen soup bowl. So this one is a ramen soup bowl. It is seven points for the whole bowl. It's absolutely delicious. You can add some veggies to it. You can hashtag bulk it up with some veggies. You could put some chicken breast in it. Um, I know it's vegan. You could put some baked tofu in it. Um, it is a soup bowl with cooked ramen noodles, deep savory vegetable broth with green onions, carrots, and corn. So some more carrots, some more corn. Those would be great ways to hashtag bulk it up. Um, this says serving tips, add a boiled egg, top with other vegetables for the garnish. 
Um, next question I'm going to get is how many, uh, let's see, how much sodium? These are super high in sodium, though. So, if you're watching your sodium, be careful. Don't eat this very often. Sodium is 990 milligrams. That's a lot. Um, it does have nine grams of protein, though, but here's a hack that you've got to pay attention to. This is the ramen soup bowl, soup bowl, seven points, okay? The ramen, all of these, all of these Andy Chuns, they have a ramen soup bowl, and then they also have a ramen noodle bowl. I accidentally had one of the ramen noodle bowls in my hand. I know Sarah, Sarah says, darn sodium, darn sodium. So just eat them sparingly, okay? So, I mean, I don't eat these every day. I eat these like once a week. Um, but when I know I'm not going to have any other sodium for the rest of the day. And, oh, and Debbie says you don't have to use a flavor packet. You can make your own. And there goes the sodium. But I was putting these in my buggy the other day, or putting these in my buggy at Kroger, and I accidentally grabbed the ramen noodle bowl. Seven points for the soup bowl. The ramen bowl was like 15 to 18 points knowing before you're going okay so know before you pick this up and put it into your buggy know or your shopping cart if you're not from around here but just know it's the soup bowl don't just see packaging assume that it's the same number of points and stick it in your buggy okay so seven points for the soup bowl it's like more than double that if you accidentally get the noodle bowl so knowing before you're going okay um if you have things, so if you have things that are like red light foods for you, potato chips, 100% red light food for, food for me. I cannot keep potato chips at home. If it's a little bitty bag like this or if it's a big bag like this, they will be gone. I cannot keep potato chips at home. So a food hack that I have discovered, a way to hack my points and hack not just eating them endlessly, I cannot explain it. I don't have an explanation for it, but for me, if I get the baked version of Cheetos or um, I think it's sour, what is it, Ch cheddar and sour cream ruffles, um, you know, things like that, If they're but if they're baked, I will only eat, oh yeah, Julie, Julie that's perfect, uh, same, same. Julie says, I whip my phone out in the supermarket and check the points on the spot. Perfect hack. So consider your homework done Consider your homework done. I'm going to go ahead and when Casey gets me a badge for that, I'll try to remember to come back and do that. Um, but I don't know why this works for me. But if I get the baked version of it, I won't eat as many. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I actually like baked Cheetos better than regular Cheetos. But if I get the baked one, I can make a bag like this. I can make this size bag last like five portions. Now, okay, there are eight. There are eight servings in here. But I can make this last like five different sit downs, you know, and it's 30, you get 34 of these for four points. So I end up eating about five points worth at a time, but that's better than the whole bag. If I ate the whole bag, that would be, let's see, 32 points and I can keep it to five. That's a great hack. Great hack. Just figuring out some way, some way that you can still enjoy whatever it is, but just, you know, kind of change it up a little bit, whatever works for you. And that might not work for you, but it works great for me. Next thing is, don't make assumptions about anything. So this Rouse um, spaghetti sauce, I was buying like sugar-free this, low-fat that, blah, 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 because I love marinara sauce. I love spaghetti sauce. I love it on spaghetti squash. I love it on noodles. I love it on vegetables. I love marinara or spaghetti sauce on lots of different things. It doesn't have to just be spaghetti. Um... Oh, yeah, and uh, Carol Lou says thinly sauce of raw potato and air fry until crisp. Perfect, perfect. Um, but but I just, you know, I had been buying, I had always purchased, you know, like uh, low sugar or no sugar or healthy choice or blah, blah, blah. This Rouse is absolutely delicious. You don't have to get this name brand, but just check them, check them, check them, check them, check them. And again, don't make any assumptions. But like this one, the tomato basil for a half a cup is only two points. And for the roasted garlic, a half a cup is only three points. The roasted garlic is so flavorful. It just has so much flavor that a half a cup is plenty for me. So half a cup is two points, half a cup is three points. And guess what? The sugar-free version that I was buying that has a little bit of a to it, same. Same number of points. Okay, let's see. 
the cereal aisle. So I did go down the cereal aisle because I need sometimes to have a quick and easy breakfast here, um, here at the showroom. Sometimes it just has to be something that I can just grab. Don't have time to make an egg. Don't have time. Sometimes I don't even have time to open my yogurt. So I try to keep a little bit of cereal here or something that I can add to my yogurt just to make it a little bit more exciting. So today I got some purely, purely Elizabeth. Um, the fact that it's grain free and keto. I didn't need that, but this one is delicious. So this is purely Elizabeth granola. If you just scan this, it's gonna come up eight points, but it's also eight points for like a half of a cup. You do not need, there's no reason to eat a half of a cup of this. You can put one or two tablespoons of this into some yogurt, put it on in like with a baggie with some bananas and shake it up or something like that. Absolutely delicious. It's so fresh and full of flavor that a little, little dab will do ya. Two tablespoons is two points. One tablespoon is one point. And um, this one is the, and it's funny, I never noticed it says recipe number 12. I'm assuming she has more than 12 recipes. This one's the vanilla almond butter, crunchy clusters with vanilla almond butter and coconut sugar. Coconut sugar, gluten-free, paleo, keto, certified something that I don't know what that is, non-GMO. And let's see, and yes, Debbie, I do love the Simply Nature um, organic tomato and basil sauce, one point for a half a cup. It is also very delicious. So this is non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, paleo, and keto, made with organic chia and pumpkin seeds and no artificial or natural flavors. The sodium, because y'all always ask me, is 105. So that's not bad. That's 5%. But again, that's if you ate, I'm sorry, a third of a cup. A third of a cup is eight points. But a tablespoon, that's plenty of flavor to go into your yogurt, is only one point. Two tablespoons is only two points. So knowing before you're going, don't just pass up stuff like this because you think, oh, granola, yeah, that's eight points. So a little, oh yeah, that's perfect. Mary said a little granola in oatmeal is nice too. It really, really is. Okay, so you're knowing before you're going. I also needed some cereal. This happened to be on sale this week at Kroger. So this is normally, I'm trying to think, I think this is normally like $4.99 or something, a box. This week at Kroger, and you've only have like, if you're, Near a Kroger, you only have like two days left now, like Monday and Tuesday to take advantage of this deal. It's nor this is normally like four ninety nine. They were running a special where it was two ninety nine or something like that. But if you did the five or more, this was a dollar ninety nine. One dollar, one dollar and ninety nine cents for a normally sized box of cereal. That's crazy. So I went ahead and got one because I got the four things on other things, but three fourths of a cup is five points that's the same as the um, cheerios that i buy sometimes so sometimes i get the flavored cheerios they are also three-fourths of a cup for five points but this one has let's see let me find it here 10 grams of fiber which now that we have our water back on oh yeah carolou says heck 4.99 would have been a deal here one dollar and 99 cents one dollar and 99 cents okay um, so this has 10 grams of fiber, which I can eat the fiber-laden cereal again because our water is fixed now. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay, so 10 grams of fiber, 6 grams of protein, does have a little bit of iron, a little bit of potassium. And, oh yeah, and Melissa mixes cereal in her yogurt all the time. Yeah. Yeah, in place of the milk. That's a great idea. I do that sometimes as well. So, again, this is another one that's organic. It is, let's see... They spent more than 50 years trying to protect our planet. And there was something else about, oh, 30 grams of whole grain, and it's the first ingredient. So whole grain is the first ingredient. But anyway, so another great choice. Don't just assume, don't just make assumptions. Don't just assume, too, though, that all cereal is the same. So if you got the version of this, um, oh, I knew what it was. Was it Special K? There was another one that was similar to this that I went ahead and scanned today, and of course I didn't write it down, but it was three-fourths of a cup. It was like seven or eight points. So it also said fiber on it. Fiber, written backwards. It also did say fiber on it, but it was like three points more than this one, and it was also like $5.99 for this size box. So knowing before you go and check it before you go. So I got that today at Kroger. I also got... A snack that I'm gonna keep on repeat now um, since I accidentally found these when I was looking for something that, I, that I'll show you here in a second that y'all saw a couple of weeks ago 
I'm going to keep this one on repeat. These are the Harvest Snaps. And here at, in Knoxville at Kroger, you have to go over to the produce section to find these. And I think I also found them in the produce section at Food City. I believe so. But there's like this strange little, it's not strange, but there's a little area in the, like right next to the produce section at Kroger here that has like some of these kind of things. Um, they have like little um, plastic trays with nuts and things in them. Uh, little jars of um, minced garlic and things like that but these are harvest snaps and they're crunchy loops and this is the sour cream and onion one, onion ones they're gluten-free packed with four grams of protein because they're made with lentils so these are baked baked lentil snacks uh, let's see veggies are the number one ingredient and in, in fact red lentils are the number one ingredient in here but these have because someone will ask for one serving which there's about two and a half servings in this bag. So for one serving, it has four grams of protein. Um, it does have 180 milligrams of sodium, but, and so one serving, 22 crisps is three points, okay? Three points. But even if I went berserk and ate this whole thing, there are two and a half servings in this container. That is six, seven, eight and a half. That's like nine points if you went berserk and ate this entire thing. Nine points and this entire bag has 10 grams of protein. So knowing before you're, knowing before you're going, if you're gonna go crazy, nine points for the whole bag and they taste like Funyuns. They do not taste like lentils. These taste like Funyuns. So even if I go to berserk, nine points versus 32 points now i'm not getting rid of these but nine points versus 32 points if i went crazy and ate the whole thing isn't that crazy isn't that so so crazy okay and we've only got a couple more so i'm gonna talk really quick quickly these are things that i repurchased um these were this one was a recommendation from melissa who is here these are the baconless bits also found these are the fresh gourmet which is a different company these are calby harvest snaps this is fresh gourmet but it's in that same section so kroger here in knoxville it's in that same section that same kind of odd like we didn't really know where to stick it section um at kroger over near the produce but these are baconless bits these are so delicious they're made out of pinto beans crazy but i bought some more of those at kroger today it is 25 calories for a tablespoon it has one gram of protein for a tablespoon and it is one tablespoon is zero points but if you do two tablespoons that is just one point it's the weirdest thing it tastes like bacon like if you just put a handful if you just eat a handful of them it tastes like bacon and then it does kind of taste like pinto beans with a ham hock in it but if you put these on a salad, a baked potato, I've made some french fries and put just a tiny bit of cheese, sour cream, and these on there. Fantastic. That is the baconless bits. These are in the same section. These are the crispy onions. And a few weeks ago, we tried these. And you can't smell it through the bag. But these are so good. The crispy onions, same section. One and a half um, tablespoons is one point. The crispy beets were Good enough, I bought another round of them to go on my salads. One and a half tablespoons, one point. Those were also very good. Um, don't shy away from things like this, like rice. Okay, so remember that never say never. I have people tell me every day, oh, you can never have rice again. You have to substitute it for something else. You cannot have rice again. Yes, you can have rice if you want rice. What you do have to keep in mind, a good hack is to get something that you can um, just make one and then cut it in half, or you can use it to make something else, or that you can hashtag bulk it up with something else. But again, also check the points, like this one, and I personally like the VT. This is two servings, two servings, but I personally like the VT because, I don't know, it cooks up nicely, it reheats nicely. Um, but this one, the whole grain basmati, a half of this container, so half of this container is six points, the Thai jasmine rice, which is my much preferred flavor, but look, it's white rice, brown rice. Half of this one is four points. So half of that one is only four points. And Debbie says, honestly, half of that with more veggies is plenty. It is. It's absolutely plenty. So that's what I do is I eat half of this, load it up with veggies, and then I use some light, um, oh, and I always call it the wrong name, Tony Hose, Terry Hose, Terry Hose maybe, um, yum yum sauce. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, so if you did half of one of these, hashtag bolt it up with a bunch of steamed vegetables, and then did half, did one tablespoon, I think it's Terry Hose. I don't know, I never can remember the name, but I eat it all the time. So that'd be four, five, six, six points. And I'm telling you, it would be this much food. So that's another way to never say never. And then the last one is a hashtag bulk it up that idea that people don't think about all the time. And that is refried beans. So when we talk about hashtag bulk it up, everybody goes, okay, great, more fruits and vegetables. Oh yeah, or Jehu's. Yeah, Debbie said Jehu's. Yes, exactly. Um, but people, you know, whenever I say hashtag, not whenever, but sometimes when I say hashtag bulk it up, people are like, great, more fruits and vegetables for me. Awesome, great, I don't like fruits and vegetables. That's not the only things that you can use to hashtag bulk it up. Fat-free, refried beans, and you can get them in regular traditional pinto beans and also in black beans and even these low-fat ones for a half of a cup of the low-fat black refried black beans or a half of a cup of the regular refried beans so this is these are pintos these these are black zero points what a fantastic way to hashtag bulk it up so um great for making a dip great for make dipping vegetables in just oh wait hold on carol lou said that g hughes has cocktail sauce what okay well i'll definitely have to check that out thanks carol um, but these are fantastic. This is a fantastic way to do that. Um, my fearless leader, Gwen, uses refried beans, some corn, um, rice cauliflower, and a little bit of chicken, a little bit of, she uses fat-free cheese. I don't like fat-free cheese. I use, I want my cheese to be cheese. Um, some sour cream or some non-fat plain Greek yogurt. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But this is one thing that people forget about. They forget to use things like um, fat-free refried beans. Or Melissa says, any canned beans, black beans, garbanzo beans, pintos, all good in a salad, or you can add them to rice. So you could totally do that. You could totally do this. This, this with some veggies. Perfection. Yeah, that would be absolutely perfect. Okay, did y'all give that? Did that give you all some ideas for hacking, for hacking your points? You know, figuring out a way to hack into your points. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but everything is marked. It's all marked with how many points it has on there. So I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, how many points are in all of this stuff before I pick it up, so that when I get ready to track it, I don't have to scan it when I'm back home. I am like Julie. I rescan everything. Even if I think I know how many points it is while I'm at the store, I rescan it all. Okay, so, um, yeah, but once I get it home, I mark it, mark it, mark it, mark it, mark it, so I don't have to forget, oh man, I've only got, you know, I've got, uh, I've only got four points today and I want some rice and I don't have six points. Picking this one, not picking this one. Okay, so I hope that gave you all some great hack ideas. I hope that you will go back and do your homework, do your homework, do your homework. And I hope you had a great time tonight. Um, I'm going to go home and enjoy the water. Yeah, I'm going to go maybe flush the toilet a couple of times just because I can. Take a nice long hot shower just because I can. Yeah. Wash clothes and wash dishes all at the same time. Yeah, it'll be fantastic. But y'all have a great week. Hopefully there will be nothing dramatic and exciting this week. Hopefully it'll just be a nice, quiet, normal week this week. And I will have nothing to fuss about next week. So y'all have a great evening. I enjoy being here with you. Um, if you're watching this later on YouTube, just go ahead and um, yes, and Julie reminds us, everybody get to drinking. It's the only time I'm gonna ask you to drink, 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 drink. Um, but everybody have a great, um, yes, I have a great wet week, Carol Lou, thank you. Um, but y'all have a great one. And again, if you're watching this later on YouTube, it's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg. Go ahead and let that next video roll over. I promise you'll enjoy it. Join us next week when I try the TikTok custard yogurt custard toast as requested by Orlando Debbie. We'll be doing that next week. Um, but y'all have a great week, and I will see you next time. Thanks for being here. Good night.